for being here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm somehow Miss Hang put me right after this lovely lady talking about wanting to go to America and have some guy. You cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm not. Uh, I guess I'm, this is the first time I'm presenting about. I guess my experience, my personal stories in the U.S. for the past seven years. So hopefully you guys bear with us. I know some of you might uh, feel sleepy already because of the Champions League final last night. I'm me kind of uh, sleepy as well, but hopefully you can get through it. So uh, I will share my personal story, basically three story. Hopefully you can get by in 10 minutes, but I think I can get the first two story done. So about enlightenment, success, and happiness. So. Uh, I don't have uh, the slide up here, but uh, uh, I think I can do it without the slides. So I was born in Hanoi in 1990s, uh, the first of the nice generation, but I feel really old right now. <laughs> and um, what to say, uh, I have a typical childhood, nothing special. Uh, I play uh, a lot of video games, and as most Vietnamese kids do, I uh, study really, really hard. And uh, physics uh, has been one of my strengths and my academic strength. Uh, during uh, my middle school and my high school, uh, I have participated in a lot of, uh, I guess, like national exams for gifted students, they call it that way, um, for my middle school and my high school. It is getting to the point that really stressful during my uh, 11th grade because a lot of competition uh, in the class, in the city, and everything. Uh, and uh, I couldn't find uh, a way out. So, in my summer of the, my 11th grade, uh, I met two of my uh, middle school friends coming back from the U.S. in the Control Exchange program. And they talk about how the education in the United States is different. Um, and I was enlightened. Uh, that's the moment I realized that I need a drastic change of my life, where this is heading to. And uh, what to say? Uh, I, have I, have I have given up my <coughs> physics passions. I no longer concentrate solely on physics. Uh, I pursued other academic uh, interests like English and chemistry as well. Uh, and also, I have looking back at how I studied my English in the past 10 years. It was going nowhere. Uh, at the end of my 11th grade, I couldn't speak I mean, a single sentence of um, English without going. Uh, uh, and uh, I was worried because I have like one year and a half to prepare for my applications. So uh, I changed my way of studying. And uh, I really, really focused on my targets to get the two tests done, the SAT and the TOEFL. And uh, they were done in like six months and a half. And uh, then I got a scholarship to go to the University of Oklahoma. So uh, looking back, the moment that I met and talked with two uh, random friends from back from my high school, it's really changing my life. And, uh, and then that is the moment of enlightenment that I think is have a critical effect on what is going on right now. So moving on, when uh, the second uh, second story about success. So going to the United States of America with uh, two decent scores in SAT and TOEFL, and also a very pretty good background in basic science. Uh, when I get from my high school, I was confident that I can get by the U.S., but I was totally wrong. Uh, during my first year, uh, I the first moment of embarrassment of my English came when I call when I call an Apple support just to activate my SIM card in my iPhone, and it was a total disaster. I couldn't communicate with them, they couldn't understand me what I'm saying, and I couldn't understand what they're saying. So it was like two minutes of blah, 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 with <laughs> so I couldn't activate my phone. So that was the moment I realized that it's the test score and everything can get you to the stress, but it cannot get you to survive the stress in, two, in four years for a degree. So I changed my, the way of learning English especially two of my weakest skills, which is speaking and listening. And then, how do, we that? How do you do that? Uh, I try to get as much exposure, not only going to the lecture, reading uh, textbooks. I, change, I try to expose myself as much to the casual environment with other students, other international students, other US students, just to get as much exposure speaking and listening to what they are saying and understanding the way they live. So I gradually get by my first year, renting, uh, renting an apartment, finding a car. I mean, some of you might already be familiar with those because you were living away from your parents. Uh, but uh, to me, living in a different country and then trying to speak the language, understand the way they live, is very difficult to get by in the first year. Uh, but I managed it, so I'm still here. <laughs> 
And uh, what else to say? Oh, uh, talking about uh, making a life decision. Like, I've never made a big life decision before um, because I usually stay with my parents, so they influence a lot in my decision process making. Um, and uh, going to the stress, a lot of decisions you have to make by yourself. And I would rather make it by myself than uh, having my parents influence them. One of the biggest decisions I made is to pick up my major. I'm specialized in petroleum engineering. Most of them may not know what it is. It's basically getting the oil and gas out of the ground. That's the way it is, sucking oil and gas out of the ground. Um, but uh, there are a lot behind it, and it was not a, it was not a familiar, it was not a common measure in Vietnam. Speaking with my parents, they are annoyed. Like, you cannot get a stable job by picking that measure. You should go finance, economics, electrical engineers. But that's a process I took like one year and a half just to figuring out what are my strengths is, what needs to be successful, what needs to be done to be a successful petroleum engineer. I took in a lot of auditing courses and talking with a lot of other students about the job prospect in the US. And I found petroleum engineer is pretty exciting. It's a special engineering. It has a lot of things in there, geology, economics, uh, chemistry and math. Perfect, I'm go for it. So I done my four year journey in the US and uh, my lessons for all of these four years is my lesson success is you have to take charge of your own maturity and development as an individual, socially, emotionally and academically, especially in this stage of your life. You have to take charge be your own boss at this time. So um, that guy hasn't hold the banner in five minutes yet, so I guess I have a lot of time. So <laughs> moving to the second story, um, I guess the second success story in my opinion, looking back, I graduated from Oklahoma. Uh, may, may, a lot of you don't know, but Oklahoma is an oil and gas state, so it's like the middle of nowhere. It's like the middle of the state. The state is like the rectangular and it's in the middle of it. So it's the nothing exciting, just uh, studying. So it doesn't fit my personality. I mean, during the first two or three years, I can get by because I have to drive in the homework. I have to do a lot of uh, coursework related things. So I didn't have it in my mind for other things. But then I grow up, I gradually realized that it's not the perfect place for me to develop as professionally, as an engineer, and also as a person. I want to have other things outside of my work and study. Uh, process. So um, I look at other options. Um, they don't have a lot of petroleum engineering programs in the states. They have it in Texas, in Oklahoma, which kind of similar. I mean, very conservative, white state things. So I try to move to a different state. Uh, I look at the East Coast. I have a road trip with my friends in the East Coast, and I found it gloomy. It's just sad and boring. I mean, the weather is bad. It's cloudy all the day. It's not for me. I want outside activities. So I look at the West Coast, California. Oh wow, sunny, sunny weather, a lot of gorgeous beaches, and uh, I don't know, good schools. Um, but the difficult thing is very expensive. Like most of the private universities are really expensive. So I have to get somehow some sort of scholarships to get there. And uh, stay in Oklahoma is an option. I mean, I'm used, I'm used to everything there. I'm familiar with the professors. I'm in my comfort zone. I know my friends, know everyone. My professor want me to stay to do my master, but uh, I just decided to move on. And uh, how do I do that? Uh, Stanford has a really, really selective program. They have like 20, 20 people in their program. Uh, it's one of the leading universities in the world, and it has good engineering program, one of the best. Um, to get to get an assistantship, even to get accepted, I know that Stanford is different because. You can, if you get accepted, you're going to get an assistantship. They don't care how, how poor or how rich you are. As long as you pass, pass the admission process, you're going to get a scholarship somewhat. So the application is very complicated. But even if I have a good test score and transcript back in my undergraduate, it's not going to be enough for me to stay out of the crowd, like stay on top of everyone, just to make me notable to the admission council. So opportunity arise. Uh, one of the admission, one of the professors in the admission council came to Oklahoma for a conference, and I know that from uh, yeah, the this is a conference for information. So I came to the, I came prepared to the conference, and with a slide, with a presentation, and I make an appointment with him personally, and uh, just present what I'm doing, like my what's my research interest now, what is my strength, what are my academic uh, courses I have taken.